Greetings, brave adventurers! My name is Foxy Bard, and I come to you today bearing stories of cringe, the likes of which have only ever been told in legend. So steal yourself, comrades, for this level of cringe has been known to be fatal to some. But grab yourself a seat around my fire as I regale you with these tales of role-playing. Our first story comes to us from the user Diddlypuff, and it is entitled Player Tries to Gotcha the Party. But you'll never guess who or what this player was. Play along if you guess before it's revealed. Let me know in the comments. You earn a point. Tale Start I was reminded today of an obtuse player from some years back. So our party of four is getting heated trying to handle a witch NPC in the middle of the woods. We'd previously knocked them out after their automatic defenses triggered when we broke into their house in search of a map. Turns out the witch is the map we've been looking for. They're a guide. Oops. Our bad. The witch agrees to help us so long as we untie them and fix their house, and three of us get working. The fourth, a flying pony with a mark on their butt, which I now understand to be a My Little Pony OC, says they will not let anyone untie the witch no matter what, and that we can find our way without their help. The party is growing tired of convincing Pony Bro to not kill or torture or bully NPCs because the character development just isn't coming. So here we have a My Little Pony OC, who is also an edgelord murder hobo. Anyone get that right? Anyone? Sensing things are getting tense, Pony asks us to pause the game. Out of character, he makes sure everyone agrees that we're not going to be doing any PvP. He smiles triumphantly and declares in-game, Aw, oh, if any of you want to work with this witch, you'll have to fight me first. Then, above game, And remember, we just agreed we're not going to fight, so... Tale end. Not pictured here is the exact next scene of the rest of the party untying the witch and ignoring the pony because what's he gonna do? Attack them? They agreed on no PvP. Also, he has hooves. He can't stop them. They're just gonna untie it with their hands. Anyway, I have no idea what system they're possibly playing in where someone can just play a My Little Pony OC. I guess there actually is a My Little Pony role-playing game. Yeah. I don't think it was that, though, because it was only this one person that was a My Little Pony OC. I don't know. No, I want to be clear here. Having a My Little Pony OC is not inherently cringe. It's when that My Little Pony OC turns into a edgy murder hobo. Then, then it's cringe. So OC, not cringe. Murder hobo, super cringe. Glad we covered this. Let's move on to the next story. And the next story comes to us from the user Agreeable Ad 1221 and it is entitled Emo Elf Princess Tries to Stab the Party's Parrot. Now, there's no prize for guessing who the problem is in this game. Story puts the cart before the horse, kinda. Anyway, tale start. So recently, I started a game in a high fantasy world where the players are a crew of adventurous pirates and treasure hunters. Ooh, that sounds like the Skulls and Shackles adventure path for Pathfinder. Check it out. Most of the pre-setup goes well, but then one player, who I'll call Emo Elf Princess because of his character, has a problem. He tries to make a melee-oriented character, but picks a race with incredibly slow land speed. I explain how it might not be the best idea, so he gets annoyed and tosses the character in the trash. Now that's an overreaction, you can work with it. Change the race up, do something like that. So he brings out a character from a campaign that previously failed. The incredibly emo and edgy princess of an elven kingdom who dabbles in blood magic, and whose backstory even has a joke about her writing vampire erotica. 
Okay, so I enjoy vampire erot- I'm not gonna finish the sentence. Please don't hurt me, YouTube. I groan, but the player explains he's really bad at making new characters, and because his other won't work, then that's all he has. That sounds like an excuse. We have a Session Zero where the players meet their sponsors, a famous retired adventurer who lends them a ship and sends them on a quest. I give the players the evening at his mansion to get acquainted, and most do. Except for Emo Princess, who instead runs off to the garden to do sword training routines, and seems surprised when nobody comes to inquire. Off to a great start. Oh no, you ran away from the rest of the party instead of saying hi? Ugh. Oh. And then they ignored you? Good on them. Good job, party. Now, I'd given the crew an incredibly drunk and mean magic talking parrot as a mascot, and everyone took to loving him instantly. Except... <sighs> for the emo princess. In the first session proper, the crew was sleeping at port when someone rang a bell. Tombs the parrot awakens, screeching, Rock, all men on deck, battle stations! The crew gets on deck and finds out it's just their sponsor there for a chat and wishing them goodbye. Emo Elf Princess flips out and takes out her sword, threatening to kill the parrot on the spot for endangering the crew but is stopped by the rest of the crew, who thinks she's nuts. Eventually, when faced with PvP at least 2v1, Emo Princess relents, but warns them that that parrot will kill us all, and how one hungover parrot mistaking a bell for the alarm bell will somehow lure the crew into complacency and get them killed. So far, Emo Elf Princess has mostly kept to herself, with nobody really being drawn into the I'm being edgy and mysterious shtick and interacting with the other players and NPCs who aren't doing everything to be disliked. Edit. We are set to have Session 2 by Saturday, and I'm hoping Emo Elf Princess chills down and stops the Edgelord act. Oh, but we all know how this goes. They never stop. Edit. To now there's an update, which we will get to right now. What, you think I'd space that out over multiple episodes in order to grift you all for more views? Yes, I've done that in the past and I'll do it again, but not this time. This time, it's gonna happen right now. Saving my full thoughts until the end. Tail, continue. Alright, same user, just titled Update on Emo Elf Princess. Let's do this. So I tried to talk to the player who came up massively hostile, blaming me for making a character that's an antisocial edgelord. Wait, hang on, no, OP, you didn't make that character. He made that character, not you. Why? Because in a previous game, which was meant to be a rather grimdark game, that player had made a joke character. A snake oil salesman who tried to sell previously used torture equipment to the villain holding them captive, which had completely killed the mood. And now he had to go the polar opposite direction and made the most antisocial and grimdark character possible so he wouldn't, quote, anger the other players despite the fact that the tone of the pirate game is light-hearted. Now, he had started a new idea on how to fix Emo Elf Princess. How? By having her act like a cuckoo lunatic brainwashed by Cthulhu, and somehow she would believe the parrot is the Herald of Darkness and follow its orders. Everyone in the group cannot understand what the hell he's going on about, and how this makes sense. Jeez, that's because it doesn't, if you couldn't tell from my tone. What? I tried to explain that's making everything worse, and antagonizing others, and making a disliked character downright unreliable and untrustworthy. He then proceeded to insult everyone else's character for being 
disruptive for playing sometimes silly characters who, nonetheless, get on with the group perfectly. He took hours to answer me, and since then, has been completely ignoring me and playing Star Wars The Old Republic instead. I've decided to not put up with such a crappy attitude and booted him. Tail end. Wow, if you couldn't tell by how I was reading it towards the end, I was very frustrated with this player. He created a problem character and then proceeded to just make her worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. <sighs> so there is one thing that I always require from my players, one backstory requirement only. You have a lot of freedom other than this, but your characters must be willing to work with the group. You need a reason to be there, because otherwise you're not part of the game. There's no reason for you to stick around. There's no reason for the other characters to keep you around. And this player didn't think that that was important. So if you ever play in one of my games, just know I'm going to make you want to be there. That is my one requirement for a backstory. And really, that's something you should just do on your own. And that'll do it for Foxy today. I know I don't usually like to call things cringe, but I'm okay with calling these two cringe, because that was pretty cringe. Anyway, don't forget to like the video if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so, ring that bell notification icon if you would like to be notified when I upload new videos, and leave me your comment down in the comments section below. You can join the Foxy Bard Discord server, it's at discord.gg slash foxybard, and you can find me on Twitter at thatfoxybard. And as always, a massive, huge, love-filled shout-out to all of my patrons over on patreon.com slash foxybard. You guys really do make this seem worth doing. So thank you, as always, for your support. Now if you'll excuse me, I feel like I need something to drink after that last one. So many of these stories are driving me to drink lately. I need more alcohol. Support me on Patreon so I can buy more alcohol. So let's douse the fire and get back to our own adventures.